So class 12. What topic we discussed yesterday? Genus. All right. Fifteen zeros nine twenty twenty four. We discussed on yesterday. Continue with this group policy, right? Which is fine grain password policy. Discussed a group policy backup and restore. We discussed a group policy result. And we discussed a DNS, okay? In the DNS, we discussed uh, what is a type of DNS. One is primary DNS server. Second one is secondary DNS server, right? Under the primary DNS server, we discussed about lookup zone. Primary DNS server is also called as a primary zone. Under the primary DNS server, we have the lookup zone called as forward lookup zone, FLZ, and we have a RLZ, reverse lookup zone. Under the forward lookup zone, we have a records, right? Those records are name services, startup authority, host record, MX record, PTA record, SRV record, and C name record, correct? And same things under the reverse lookup zone. The same records would be updated when you have configured the reverse lookup zone under the pointer. So what do you mean by primary DNS server? It's a read write of copy of DNS zone database. But the secondary DNS server is only read copy of DNS zone database. Okay. So we understood for the yesterday, entire complete the records information. And we created, we understood that is in how DNS works. It means how it's resolving name to IP. Okay. And we have created a study on web applications. It was trying to trying to accessing over the name. It was not happening. But once we created a host in the DNS server, and we have able to access the DNS access access the with the name of the domain name. Our website. What else we discussed? All right, these these are the topic we discussed yesterday. So we need to talk about the continue with the DNS, which is how to configure secondary DNS server, verify the all the records are updated in secondary in the server. We also discussed yesterday for the stub zone, correct? Which is another secondary DNS server. It's considered as a secondary DNS server. Which is called stub zone. And stub zone is indicate with it. It is also considered as a second DNS server, but it will have only three record stores. Right? What are those? Startup authority, host, and 
name services. Why we need this top zone? And what is the difference between of the secondary DNS server and the top zone? Secondary DNS server, it has all the records. It has all the records coming from primary DNS server. And this is not the best a way to configuring the secondary DNS server, which is non-secure place. So hence, Microsoft has bought a new feature after, you know, during the 2003 servers, not after, it's during the 2003 onwards, which you need to keep only, sec instead of the secondary DNS server, keep the stub zone. And uh, overall, you would be looking for that is in how that is the records are getting updated automatically. We would be talking about, we will see this secondary DNS server and we will be discussing about DNS backup. How do you take a backup and restore? And we'll talk about some DNS server properties. Before we talk about, anyone has any question? So far we discussed. All good? Yes. This, this topic is most important. Concentrate here. It would ask you a question interview. And uh, you should be, you know, answer some maximum people has confusion in this DNS topic. When I was in an interview panel asking for the DNS topics, DNS, sorry, DNS questions, right? When I asked for the lookup zone, sorry. Sorry. When asking the DNS lookup zone, they're, they're saying that is in, you know, primary zone, secondary zone. Primary zone is different. Secondary zone is different. Forward lookup zone is different, reverse lookup zone is different. And records are important, how the records are going to verify. So those are all, you know, familiar with this to understand thoroughly and practically. And it should be confidently answered during the interview and also support. Okay, let me connect my uh, syllabus. Google Cloud Console. I'm going to power on these servers. First most important, what is actually second DNS server does here? We have the primary DNS server, right? We have the primary DNS server. We have all the records. What is the purpose of this is uh, second DNS server configuration? What is the necessary needed? What purpose we are going to configure the second DNS server? Uh, for backup. For backup, for redundance. Okay, if sometime Worst scenario, the primary DNS server is down, then we would need for the secondary DNS server to authenticate, correct? Yes. So we have all the records in primary DNS server. Then when we configuring that secondary DNS server, we need another member server. Okay, member server. We just install 
install dns role okay then create a zone secondary zone in this that's it when you create a secondary zone you will not be having a does not have a records right where under the second dns server we need to do this zone transfer from primary dns server to secondary dns server this is we are going to do for how to do the primary dns server to secondary dns server and once it is transfer the role transfer the role transfer the records right and uh, when you validate for the secondary dns server you would be able to see this all the records are available in secondary dns server but when checked you will have only read copy okay you will not be having any of the writable or anything modification you cannot do anything it is a it is a read copy getting my point yes sir okay now let's see how to configure it so we would need for one server as a member server let's take it one server as a member server what we can do i have okay uh, the client machine is there right it is already server operating system it has um, it is already member server this machine we can make as a uh, instead of building new server we can make as a secondary dns server okay let's see this i'll take this machine first let me connect with my uh, root dns server Okay, let's log in this. DNS MGMT dot MSC. You would be able to see these records. Okay, we have this DC one client one CH and DC. These many records are there, and you can also see this reverse lookup zone. You have all the records are there, right? Now same records, all the records would come to the same in a secondary DNS server. How to configure? Just connect with this machine, client machine. We will make as a Secondary DNS server instead of taking a new machine. I will say this secondary DNS server. Since it's already member server, you need to log in with your administrator.
okay so this is a member server logged in now what we need to do we just install only dns role okay now come back here add also in features next next i would select for the only dns role and finish it Okay, let's see this. okay now once it is installed only dns role just to go to open this dns console so you will not have any zone here right it is just configured for the nothing easier correct it is empty completely right now what we can do right click a new zone create a zone which is called secondary zone okay does not have any records and create a zone secondary zone secondary zone means you can see the secondary zone is also called as a secondary dns server create a copy of zone that exists on another server this options helps balance processing load of primary server to and provides the fault tolerance right and go next and uh, what is my zone name nt.com and what would be the ip address of my zone where you can see this master dns server so you need to update for the master dns server ip address which is 10.162.0.3 it is taking for the fqdn www.nt.com but it should not take it is a if uh, www dot it should take as a computer name dot fqdn so we can delete it but uh, that's fine but since it's taking for the 0 0.3 is okay it's validated and finish it now you see this when you click on this nt.com you won't be able to see the any loaded here right same things you can manage it for the new zone for reverse look of zone secondary zone Next, IP version 4, it would be at 10.162.0. Master server 10.162.0.3. Next, and finish it. And you can see this. Now, both the records are secondary zone is configured but the zone is not loaded what we need to do when you go to the primary dns server you can right click on the zone and properties you would be able to see this zone transfer here this zone transfer what you can do allow zone transfer to one of the you can do any of the computer but since we have the specific secondary dns server only to this computer following servers you can edit it and you can add that which server you wanted to be update that zone transfer. So what would be the IP address of this second IDN server? 10.162.0.4. So 10.162.0.4. So IP address of the secondary servers. Okay. So it is taking 
uh, it is ip address has been taken but it shows is a you know cross error mark that's fine cross you know red mark that's fine and apply okay and same things you can see the uh reverse look of zone properties zone transfer allow this zone transfer and edit it and type this here 10 dot 162 dot 0 dot 4 right 4 okay right click ok click ok now so you did for the zone transfer here you just come and see the secondary DNS server you refresh it see this you just see the refresh it Reverse look of genes get updated. Primary DNS servers. Forward look of gen, it should be coming in few minutes. You just refresh it. Okay, see this? You have that is in all the, okay, it's coming still this. You can do the transfer from the master and refresh it. Okay, see this? You would be able to see the, all the records now from the primary DNS server to secondary DNS server. Yes or no? Yes, yes. All the records. Now, do you create any records here? Do you create any record here? In the secondary DNS server? No. But when no. I go to the DC1, can I create a records? See this? Yes. Right. So, basically, what you can do now, when you have configured here, all the computers, all the application server database, you can go to the ncpa.cpl. You would update here. Properties. You have the primary DNS server is this IP address. And you can mention for the 10.162.0.4. So it, every client machine should aware about. If the primary DNS server is not available, I would go to the Second DNS server, and I should get this clear. Everyone is clear how to configure the second DNS server. Yes, yes, perfect. So now we would talk about important topic called as a DNS backup. So DNS backup is default or GUI mode, we cannot take a backup. Or GUI mode, we cannot take a backup directly. But what we need to do here, default, we have DNS backup folder Which is a DNS database, which is called the path is path is C colon C colon Windows System thirty two. You would be seeing the DNS. Let's see here. Go to the folder. Go to the folder. C colon. Windows. System 32. You would be able to see this DNS. Okay. There is a default folder called as under the backup. See this? This feature came from the 2012 onwards. 
automatically you have the backup but you won't be able to see any of the you know contained here but folder just created but now you sh should have that is in actually the primary DNS server is not this is ads right this is ads okay this is host name the actual database is which machine it is it should be a dc1 correct let's take this dc1 i was not able to log in last two week back let's take this i can able to log in that's what you are not able to see the database folder here we'll validate here add server which is dc one for primary DN server okay let's see this Good. I'm able to log in now today. All right. So now see this in this. When you go to the C colon CM, uh, my computer. C colon Windows. System 32 and DNS. If you open the folder here, see this is a database here. Okay. The backup is folder created. You won't be able to see any file in this just for the folder created. But now you see this. There is a zone called nt.com DNS, right? This is our zone name. When you go to the DNS mgmt.msc. forward lookup zone nt.com okay so what is that nt.com is a, is a dns you see this concentrate here what is the space of this one kilobit right the size of but when you open this when you open this uh, you can just open the notepad okay open this notepad do you see any records in this file? You don't see anything much record in this, right? Yes or no? Yes, yes. Right. So it says the database file, but I do not see any of the my actual DNS record file here. Correct? But my DNS records are these many are there. Right? The actual yes. database file is in this path. But what we need to do we need to export this DNS from the PowerShell. We need to export, which is called zone export. We need to export, which is zone, we need to zone export from PowerShell. So what we can do, so you can make it as a old, okay, this is or you can delete also, there's no problem. I don't have any backup by default, correct? As I said, by default, you do not have any backup. But when you go back and see this path, you would be able to see the database file, but the database file does not have any content. So what we need to do to bring that contained actual database file to bring here, we need to do the export DNS. You can say zone export. Okay, zone export from PowerShell. So how to do this? There is a command is there. Okay. Before that, what I will do, I will make this as old. Okay, I'll make as old. And uh, this is also you can make it as a old, which is another zone which is created for the underscore MSTGC. 
okay now we need to go back to this power shell remember this concept is most important so why i should rename this and why it is not been by default having a, a database file it is just created a database file that's it but due to security reason or accidentally deletion point of you know avoiding the accident deletion point of view this would be a hidden and we need to bring that export file by using powershell which is little you know critical service in the dns all the all the records and dns database it is hidden so when we wanted to deal with or when we want to play with the backup and restore of the dns we need to export that file so the command is you can run this command here dns cmd you need to run this command dns cmd space slash zone export zone export z o n e x p o r t and the first zone was you can see this this one okay, rename it copy this okay zone export underscore msdcs underscore nt dot com dot dns two we need to do this as a backup underscore backup and i'm not giving any default path here but it would go to the directly same path where we have seen this c colon windows system 32 dns path okay dns cmd space slash zone export this is the first dns zone msdcs nt.com dns and it would going to create a, a new dns database file where it is going to exporting that is in all the database file with this name and same things one more same command we need to run for normal dns which is nt dot nt dot com this one we need to run the two command one is nt dot com dot dns other one is mstds okay let's see this is going to executing or not is not recognizing cmd light okay so it is should be coming dns zone export right axport need dns cmd cmd yeah. correct sorry this is a cmd not for the smd okay dns cmd right see this it is command failed uh dns error zone does not exist okay this dns we are talking about right let's see this refresh mstds this is the one we are talking about okay this is fine let's talk about this another one is uh which is nt.com dot dns nt.com dot dns we should be going to use it dns underscore backup this is also coming failed why it is coming failed because let's see this task just for just restart this so once you have run this command right you would be able to see the same command here in this path and then you would be able to see when you open with notepad we will have that 
all the records you now all the zone all the records would be able to see this by default if you see this we don't does not have any information here it is just single file here right we do not have any information much on this so hence we need to export the file uh, from the command from the powershell okay so this shows as a dns error it is a failed dns cmd what is the command we are going to use it let me just check this dns cmd export Okay, this is the file. We need to provide the server one, right? Server one to the BSK, BAK. Okay, let's see this. I have given this name called as a BSK. But it should take it actually instead of the uh, nt.com.dns underscore backup. Just for the name has been changed only. Instead of that, it should be taking backup also. There's no change in this. But server name we have not given. It should, uh, you know, join export, which is DNS, nt.com.dns, should convert to underscore. dot backup okay they gave the server name right what is the server name we are given here okay i gave this the underscore right it must be dot here not for the underscore let's see dnsmd join export dot nt dot the nt dot com dns okay let's see the file once again nt dot com dns I was giving you underscore backup, right? It should be backup. Either you can give the back, which is extension of the backup, or you can give the backup. Depends on the name you can give this. Let's run this. Still not. Okay. Uh, I can give the server name if it is not running. Host name. Uh, DC one something says here, right? DNS CMD server name. Slash John export zone name and export file name okay same we have given let's see this so this is the server name which is dc1 zone export which is nt.com dns this should be nt.com right 
not DNS. NT.com. To NT.com DNS dot backup. Let's try with this. Join export NT.com to NT.com dot DNS. Okay, this was a missing here. It should not give the DNS here. It's only zone five. Okay, and just copy this. Execute. Okay, now see this. It's running the successfully here. NT.com to file this C colon Windows System 32 DNS NT.com DNS backup on the server. Command completed successfully. Correct. This is a one file has been created, and other one is same things we need to create for, which is default one is uh, MSDC. This one is. Okay, not DNS. It just should not take a DNS for the for the zone export. You can give only for without DNS here. You get my point. You guys understood right where it is missing the command. Yes or no? I was yes. giving I was giving here with the dot DNS. It should not give the dot DNS, it should give the only zone file. And then you can give the with the dot DNS backup. Okay, now this another one is you can take it. This is successfully. The two file has been created. The backup export has to be happening successfully. See this? This is one and this is one. Now now see this. The file size is 5k. Now see the file size is 4k. When I open the notepad. Original, uh, original database file, okay. Original database file from you will be getting for the. You would be able to see this now. You would be able to see the all the records. See this. You're getting. Zone records. Yes. Yes. See this. See this all the information. Getting. This is yes. original. How we were getting this file? As I said, there is no direct backup. Uh, backup file, right? We would need to do this zone export. Remember. So this is a actual right file name. Remove this, and might be you will get this kind of activity during you know change activity in your production. So we wanted to take. Uh, backup of the DNS zone, DNS database, and we wanted to see this. I have taken the backup now, right? So what we need to do? Let me just delete that my zone. Okay, let me delete this zone. Nt dot com, delete it. I have deleted, right? So accidentally in your office somewhere there is in your your zone has been deleted. Now how do we revert back all? It is a production. It is a critical, correct? So we would be needing, but that is an immediately restore from the database, right? It's gone now. So nothing is there, correct? Now what we need to do, remember this steps is most important. If it is zone is not available, but you have a backup, how do we restore it? Remember while restoring, after deletion of zone, zone, DNS zone. Okay, make sure the export zone successfully copied in in this path. Correct? Yes or no? Now, for restoration, DNS zone, what we need to do, 
create a zone steps to follow right click here new zone next you should select a primary zone and don't ignore to uncheck this okay you are just creating a zone you are not taking from the database you just uncheck this and just create a zone nt.com next and now here it is a actual zone file so now do you don't need to create a zone file right i have already zone file what is the zone file here use existing zone file dot backup correct yes sir no yes next and now you can keep this is allow dynamic only now see this now this is all backup same things reverse look of zone new zone next don't forget to uncheck this i'll tell you how to uncheck again i am check box enable okay 10.162.0. .0. and use existing file and next allow dynamic and uh, update and finish it this was you need to do the backup i believe it should be having okay this is a zone name you need to provide instead of this Let's see. Okay. It is not coming. My recovery reverse look of zone. Ten dot one sixty two, ten dot one sixty two, right? Ten dot one sixty two dot zero dot two. You should be having this path. Let's see this queue the backup. The system cannot load this fetch. Let's see this. I'll go into create a reverse lookup zone later. Okay. So now I have taken for this nt.com is the my you know all the data has been back okay the most important are the steps to be enabled properties what you can do when you wanted to go with this the dynamic update it must be enabling the secure here but it is coming to the secure what you need to do until you are enabling now this is just for the uh, without a database right you can change to change to active directory integrate let's see this another one is this option one second guys i'm just getting a call Guys, one minute. Huh? I just got on call. I'll be in the past few minutes. Please take a quick break. Come back after 10 minutes. We'll continue with this. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We have restored this, you know, records. But important, when we go to the properties on the zone, you see the dynamic update is shown as a still none and non-secure update. But it should not be this kind of setting. It should be a secure update, right? So what we need to do, we need to click on the change and I'm enable sorry, recording. Sorry. Uh, did you continue recording? Uh, I think I continue the record.
yes is record is going on yeah record is going on okay so now what we need to do you need to click on this type of primary and enable this database and click okay and say yes so now see this after it is changing to the active directory integrated type of the dns now you would be able to see the secure that's all so this is has to be followed same step successfully restored uh, you know you are all the Z dns zone from the backup now you can directly recreate it new zone next next you can revert back this one okay let's see this 10 dot 10 dot 162 dot 0 dot 2 0 next and finish it now you can create a pointer record 0 dot 2 and browse you can give the host name And don't forget to uh, update this refresh. It is done for the secure only, right? No, all done. So DC one dot. That's it. Okay, you would be able to see this. Your all the records. You're getting the mainly important to understand i'm just retrieving with this by default we do not have a options to take a backup we need to export the dns zone with this this command then it would going to store the default path earlier it was the same file was created you can rename with the old okay i have renamed with the old and then the same file with the backup file is going to create it okay so now this is a file you can keep somewhere other uh, places for the safer side you know emergency or the database zone should be have some other places rather than a sql and windows 32 but when you export that is and it would come the same same database path so after that you need to while while creating a zone the other important here while restoring a dns zone make sure uncheck okay the Active Directory database zone. Okay, let's let me just give the same name. You should be uncheck this while the storing here. Right click. New zone. Next. This store the zone in Active Directory. Uncheck option. Okay, uncheck store active directory. Store the zone in the active directory. In active directory. Okay, so while creating new zone new primary zone okay and this is has to be taken care note here important okay and then once zone records are available available we need to enable we need to enable dynamic updates as secure okay to update dynamic updates secure for this, we need to we need to click on type primary
primary primary change and enable here we have unchecked right here we have unchecked and enable store the dns zone once you enable this then only you would be able to allow to update the secure this option that's all getting understood guys how to take a backup and how to we restore the dns records we deleted and we created correct we restored uh, one question yeah go ahead uh, dns is old technology and it goes uh, far away uh, it's already 10 years why there is no uh, feasible way of backuping or the the powershell is the the only way i mean the command line ha huh. see this is a major uh, things right that is what now you can also do the command line also for this it is not only you know powershell you can also do the command line also it is uh, not necessary to go with the powershell but powershell is uh, you can do it for this because this is a command is the most important this is a command line actually not for the powershell cmd let okay but since this dns a topic dns database is crucial hence they have not uh, kept into the default as you know you know take the backup and you can uh, easily to delete and recreate it no so hence who has a knowledge on the dns they can use it with, it, with the help of this command clear uh, yes yes yeah okay so now dns cmd that's that's the the actually not a powershell you have right no that's no exactly exactly online. there is not a command let of the powershell it's a command you can run also from the command command prompt like this you can also run from the cmd like this okay thank you what is the last topic is okay now the another important you would be able to see this you have seen this records some property right records you see this uh, you just observe here all the records are you see there is a time stamp this this uh, you know there is options called you would be able to see the records time stamp here properties now there is another important point i should see this in a time stamp you might have observed here you would be able to see this static and dynamic okay that options is coming from advance why it is not showing you here the one more options called if you go to the one of the record properties you would be able to see this there's a time to leave and uh, there is a record time stamp okay so now since we do not have dscp when you have a dscp environment in your 
organization right in your environment you might see these records here timestamp options in the timestamp option has a two type okay there is a timestamp two option one is static other one is dynamic so what do you mean by static and dynamic here are the which the currently what is happening in organizations all the client system has ip address from dscp correct yes or no yes yes all the client system has ip address from dscp and there is a correlated dscp and dns so dscp will be providing ip address ip address and dns both correct to client machine so the dscp provided the ip and dns and whichever ip address is provided from the dscp and those dns ip address would be updating as a dynamic dns ip updating in dns server updating as dynamic now why it is this important here now think about there is a since that is a secure update what is that options we have updated here when you see this option properties it is dynamic updates right the all the records are updating dynamically and with secure and any of the guest user guest computer guest computer connected in our network connected our network and he is a part of computer is a part of part of the computer name right is part of our dns correct yes or no yes or no guys he connected in our network and his computer name will be updating in our dns correct since it's a dynamic yes. update yes, yes. Yes. now think about this guest computer after his work computer after his work he left he left the organization he is no more now correct now he is no more but his computer name but computer name and ip address still exist in our dns record yes or no with updating dynamic getting me point you might yes, see sir. this this kind of options in all the dns uh, you know records which is you are not taken care for the proper configuration this uh, we call as a unwanted computer name and records are still exist in our uh, in our dns record and this has to be taken care now even though in the dscp you have option there is a lease period okay there is a lease period if you not configure those uh, ip address lease period not set for those particular ip those particular guest computer and ip address still exist in dscp as well Yes or no? Yes or no? If the, if it's uh, inside of the lease period. Correct. So it is since that IP that this computer is already no more in our organization, but this IP address still exist in my DSCP, which is released from the DSCP, and same IP address is still exist in my DNS record. Yes or no? and these who is going to clean up 
we need to do some you know dns service dns Sorry. yeah dns service dns service ah huh? yes ah uh, now to do this kind of activity we call as aging and scavenging yes sir scavenge scavenging we need to tell this setup right this con this configuration has to be done in dscp as well as we need to configure in our dns that process we call as aging and, and scavenging the aging and scavenging what we are going to do here you see this you can do it for aging and scavenging can be done zone level can be done dns server level okay to do that what you can do if there is a options called as a zone level aging when you click on that aging you see this scavenge stale stale resource record which is no refresh interval by default it will not be you know refreshing immediately if you enable this option it will wait for the 7 days it will not be refreshing in your database until 7 days it will not be refreshing and now after 7 days that record is still exist since it is not refresh and the actual computer is not available in our organization what we need to do we need to refresh it the time between the earliest moment when the record time stamp can be refreshed and the earliest moment when the record can be scavenged the refresh interval must be must be longer than the maximum record refresh in, refresh period and you can keep the 7 days right you can enable this 7 days and this settings relevant this aging and scavenging setting relevant <coughs> with related with dscp record dscp ip address setting ip address lease period setting and you have that options in the dscp we will be talking about next week when we discussing the dscp right and there you have options to check box enable the check box enable options is stale the record after how many days you wanted to stale the record and you can mention here update here update after you can mention the date how many date how many days this record should be should be stale and this information it would be validated here whichever the records are you set a date set a date and it will be wait, waiting for the one week it will not be going to refresh it and after refreshing after this 7 7 14 days 14 days that record that record would be exist in your organization in your dns and where you dscp has mentioned this stale record date and and that date is exceed in your dns those record will be get cleaned up automatically and this is has been done for the zone level as well as you can see this server level as a aging and stale record stale you know uh, scavenging stale record stale resource record and you want to enable this it's completely server level also you can do it for if you have a multiple zones you can see this set aging and scavenging all zones this is important actually okay so you have a multiple zone instead of uh, enabling individual zones aging and scavenging you can also set this option so this part when we doing the dscp next week and you would be able to see that setting and when you setting this enable and this aging and scavenging is been you know work for that accordingly this is for aging and scavenging setting for clean up the unwanted ip address and ip address and computer name exist in a dns server clear getting my point
So that means that the DHCP only writes the addresses. Yes. Yes. Uh, to DNS, but right. he, the DNS itself needs to clean up. No, DNS will not have anything rights to clean up because the the IP address is coming from the DSCP only. So where it is have a dynamic. Getting you would be able to see this dynamic. You can see this timestamp here dynamic. Statics we cannot do that. Statics we need to do manual cleanup. Whichever IP address you see this static. Static means what? Now there is another scenario. The guest computer connected to our network, but IP address is provided. It is taken dynamic from DSCP. Okay. And now guest computer connected our network and configured the IP address. Configured IP and DNS static. It is not only guest computer, many of the computer where, you know, employee also is connected and he did not uh, uh, come to the office for the one week, two week, right? Or one month, he left for the, he left for the organization, which he, he was using for the laptop longer period, right? And this, this kind of computer, you configure the IP and DNS static. And those must be, you will not be able to aging and skewing will not going to do this because since you are static, you are, you are configured. This is not going to take from the DSCP. Now we need to do that. We need to have a validate. We need to validate, validate how many IP address are configured static and which is not using, sorry, static, which are not using longer period. What we need to do, we need to manually clean up. Manually clean up. The scavenging and aging, it would work only for your dynamic updates. Note, aging and scavenging work with dynamic updates which is related to DSCP, DSCP IP address settings. So this, this will be going to check in now when you're talking about the DSCP topic next week. Understood? Yes, yes. Good to go. Yeah. Okay. So this topic again, we will be talking about when we configuring the DSCP. And these are all the major topic we have discussed under the DS in the DNS. Good to go. Yep. All right. So we would be going to talk about two more topic is pending. We'll talk about in DSCP next week. We'll talk about the uh, in the DSCP, we'll create a multi-scope. What purpose we need to create a multi-scope? Multi-scope. And we'll talk about the um, failover DSCP. Okay. And backup and restore DSCP. Then we would be talking about uh, backup and restore topic. Another one is and troubleshooting. Then we will be end up the course next week. So can you explain a failure cluster creation? I would be talking about this DSCP failover. Cluster will not going to talk about. For the DSCP failure will talk about. Is the part of the Active Directory cluster services? No, 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 no. This is a not cluster, it is a failover. You can directly do the failover. There's no need to have a cluster for this. In active directory, we do not have any cluster. We, do, we don't do the cluster for that because we have already 
uh, additional domain control is already available, right? Yes. Cluster, cluster for what? Which is uh, which server is not able to you know, not in network or is primary primary servers is not available. Then you can plan for that for a high yes. availability. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, if I may. Sorry. One more question about the DNS, if I may. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Um, what will be the performance count, you know, uh, if we have a domain, let's say 200, 500 machines mm -hmm. and we have one DNS server mm -hmm. and, or two, uh, mm -hmm. what will be the, the, the performance uh, indicator that we need more servers, uh, DNS servers. So, you know, how to deal with that request, okay. for example. Good question, actually. So the recommendation is per domain, okay, per domain, we should have two DNS server. One is primary DNS server. Second one is second DNS server. No matter how many records, how many computers are there, this will be handled it per domain we're talking about. Okay, in this per domain, doesn't matter you have 100 domain controller, 100 member server, all the records would be going to take care, but we should have a proper skill person, proper, you know, uh, knowledge person for to manage. And here you have a two, uh, two options again. You have a dedicated DNS you want to manage or AD integrated DNS. There's a two things here. You have, you know, many bigger organization, they have a dedicated DNS, which you ask the question, how do we handle it? Uh, for the bulk, we have the member server, we have domain controller, right? Such requirement people would be using for dedicated DNS server. Which is completely, it is has a, you know, separate vendor to manage for that is in complete and bigger organization. Which we call a standalone DNS server. Standalone means uh, not installed on the domain controller. No, correct. Correct. You just install the DNS and that DNS IP address we would be providing in our AD, AD Active Directory infrastructure. There is no AD integrated. So, what you mean by AD integrated DNS means what? What you mean by AD integrated DNS means what? Where you are installed the Active Directory and plus DNS you installed. And here there's no DD here. And in your organization, get that DNS IP address. And now we are we are configuring the IP address like this, right? NCPA.CPL. We are configuring the same IP address, correct? They're configuring the same IP address or machine, right? That is the AD integrated DNS server. Now you have a standalone or dedicated DNS server and that IP address should get it. Get the DNS IP address and we should be providing here. For AD, we need a DNS. For the DNS, we don't need an AD. And all the records and everything will be managed in this dedicated DNS server. IBM, Infosys, Wipro, they have their own dedicated dedicated DNS server, which is separate team would be. And even though we are working with the Active Directory, we do not have any control on that IP addresses, uh, which is DNS IP addresses. We would be uh, we would be uh, you know depending on the DNS team, separate DNS team. Understood? Yeah. Perfect. Does, does the DNS uh, belongs to the operational uh, part of the IT or to the network or to both? DNS would be, what is that? DNS as a service, does it belongs to operational IT, you know, team ops uh, or to the network? It's okay. network, it's network, it's network. Net, right. It's network, yeah. It's a network services DNS. Yes, yes.
in DHCP and DNS are the network services. Correct, correct, correct. Both main network services. Is there maybe DNS appliance that provides the, the, the appliance that provides this service on a network? Correct, correct. Is there any or uh, still running? Just... Yeah, yes, yes, because you now there is no have alternate options for to you know dynamic or you know, then not dynamic. It is a uh, resolving that is in infrastructure where you are naming convinced resolving, right? Still, we depending on the DNS. But when you move to the cloud infrastructure, right? And you have that again infra from the active from the Azure point of view. There you have that is in an uh, update from the in Azure. They have a separate, uh, you know, integrated there in um, active uh, sorry Azure uh, DNS, where you do not want to manage for on premises DNS like this. You wanted to have that's what uh, Microsoft has you know bringing to their infrastructure to the cloud. And we have a lot of lot of issues during patching activity, during server reboot. Okay, there would be a something business uh, impact. So entire IT infrastructure, the only one culprit person called as a DNS. If the DNS has an issue, your business would be impacted. Major. And DNS infrastructure is not properly managed. You will have a lot of issues where, as we discussed now, right? These are all many records are getting updated, which are not cleaned up. And you are by mistakenly updated as a non-secure this option. Some people, you know, keeping this option enabled, knowingly or unknowingly, this is a very you know risk. You, you see this this option. It should not be actually when you go to the properties, you would be able to see this option. Some people keep this non-secure and secure. This is a risk, right? I have seen that is in a few areas where we have assessed this environment. It should be always secure. So such, you know, some dependency and some uh, uh, lacking of this uh, skills. Now you are infrastructure moving to the cloud. You, have, you will not have as much issues, production issues, and you don't need anything dependent on this kind of issues. All good? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So let's uh, wind up today now, 7.19 India time. So we'll connect for the next week and we'll cover up the text pending core topic. Thanks, Neil. Thanks. Take bye, care, guys. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah, bye. -bye. Yeah, bye.